Hi there, Sam Baxendale, co-founder and director of Kinetic Hiring. I'm absolutely thrilled to be back after a long break, introducing the first of our three-part series of Insight On Demand. Today, we are gonna be starting the series with a bang. We're interviewing Alan Chia, who is general manager of Carson Malaysia. So Alan, firstly, thank you so much for joining us today. It's great to have you. Yes, thank you for having me as well. Our pleasure. So for the benefit of our audience, um, if they don't know you already, why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself, what you've been up to? Okay. Give us a bit of background. Oh, there's plenty to do. There's plenty happening these days. Um, I'm the country GM for Carson Certified, cool. right? We're basically the arm that sells cars. Cool. And right now, we are, I'm tasked basically to, you know, um, catalyze the entire used car platform in Malaysia. Wow. Yes. And then now we're having branches in uh, Klang Valley and also we're opening up in other states. Cool. Yeah. Awesome. And, and it's quite um, a little bit about your background as well, coming up to what you've been doing currently. Be great to hear a little bit about that journey. How, what brings you to today? What uh, are you doing now? Uh, I was never in the tech industry, right? Okay. And then uh, it all started when I joined Malaysia Global Innovation and Creativity Center, also mm -hmm. known as Magic. That was about five, six years ago, right? And right after that, about in a year and a half, I joined Go Car Malaysia, mm -hmm. which is a car sharing platform at that time. With, at its peak, there was about 1,000 old cars across seven states. I was the CEO there for about, about one, two years, and mm -hmm. then I was invited to join Carson, right? Because now they're growing and they're expanding into the retail sector. And here is where we are now. So there's some fantastic experience uh, yes. there, Alan. Um, the topic today is really talking about talent in relation to this big boom in the digital sector we're seeing in Malaysia at the moment. It's a great thing, but it obviously presents a host Got of it. challenges of course. as well. So we'd, we'd like to sort of explore your ideas around you know, best approaches and ideas that you might have employed to be to achieve the successes you have over the years. Let's start with a general question. Availability of talent in the region, it's obviously one of the main pain points. The sector's growing at a certain rate, there's a certain Correct. demand for niche skills. There's an ongoing challenge in, in terms of keeping up with that particular demand. What would you say is a sort of general picture at the moment in terms of Malaysia's ability to keep up with demand in terms of digital talent right now? Okay, speaking for my vertical, mm -hmm. right, since I'm running uh, the verticals of uh, sales, retail and operations, we are still pretty good. Right, mm -hmm. we're still pretty good. On a group level, there might be some uh, gaps that we're looking into mm -hmm. because especially right now, we're building up on the tech layers. And that's something that, you know, I would, um, I, I don't see much, uh, many obstacles for now, but it's mm -hmm. come to a point of time where, you know, we are really uh, scraping a lot of the bottom of the barrels or we have to look into other countries or we're hiring a lot of expats. In terms of local Malaysia talent, I believe they're all out there, but like yeah. I said, now the demand is, you know, is going to be exceeding the supply. Yes. Yeah. So that's where we are at right now. Do you think there are any particular pain points? I mean, in my experience, Malaysia fares pretty well in certain areas, but struggles in others. I won't say which areas because I'm interested in your perception there. What, what, what are your thoughts on that? In terms of pain points, yeah. I think it's still when it comes to the salary range, yeah. uh, right? What can you offer to the person that you want to attract? Yeah. You know, the kind of perks, benefits. I think we need to be more competitive right. in terms of comparing to other countries around us. Right. Yeah. yeah. That's the one key pain point that I see. Yes. No, I think that's fair enough. What about these particular skills? So let's say data science versus software versus product marketing. Where, where do you think we're strong and where do you think we're really lacking at the moment? I think right now, uh, from what I can see, right, because product and data doesn't fall directly under me, I, I mm. see that it's actually getting pretty uh, accessible to higher product talent okay, and good. also data talent. Yeah, right. that's the, been a problem for a yeah, long time. It's been a problem for a long time, yeah. right? But over the past few years, I can see that it's, it's readily available. Mm. Unlike last time, you know, you have to explain to people what the data analyst is, what the data scientist is. But right now, you can see actually see these kind of jobs cropping up uh, okay. in, in LinkedIn and other job platforms as well. Okay. So yeah. you think the ecosystem is building in that yes. area, building yeah. a better pipeline? I believe that's okay. So, yeah. Well, that's good to hear. Okay, so f bearing in mind, so the good news is that the talent pipelines are improving, but there's still uh, a bit of a war on talent. For sure. What do you think businesses can do to address some of the gaps that they might be experiencing around a, a lack of talent or perceived lack of talent? 
I think a lot of the companies right now, I mean, they're already doing it, to be honest, right? Everyone's participating together, coming out with um, communities, forums, you know, mm. and gatherings. They're basically bringing a lot of the, the talent or even the ones that want to jump into the talent pool, mm. right? Together, giving them the aspect of what can I do to mm. be part of this? Yes. Right? I think that's already happening, but yeah. I think more initiative is needed mm. from the, whether it's from the government sector or the private sectors. Yes. Yeah. To be able to give them the resources that's needed to grow them to be part of the talent pool. I see. Yeah. And, and what about employer branding? I mean, it's a big theme these days. Yes. I mean, you know, re rewind three years, businesses wouldn't have invested anything like they do now in terms of how they project themselves social media, CSR, etc. Correct. Carson is a business that I think does a, a particularly good job in this area and I know there are a host of initiatives yes. relating to this. Um, if you can comment on, you know, what, what sort of, um, you know, how would you define a good employer branding initiative and what, what particular points do you think are so important to bring out to make yourself an attractive employer to top talent? I think right now, especially when you, when you speak to so many people that you hire, right, they actually look at the kind of uh, impact they can bring to the business. Mm. So the transparency of the impact that the company brings is mm. very, very important. Right? Yes. Because people must know what they are fighting for. Yes. Right? And then the next thing is that we find that they are very attracted to the team that's already working there, mm. right? In terms of the culture and the mindset, you know, and mm. um, that's why I always encourage people. Now, if you want to join a, join a company, mm. talk to the people that's already working there. Mm. Right, then you get an idea of what kind of people you'll be fighting with. Absolutely. Are you talking at a sort of a personal level as individuals or like the brand purpose? Or the is brand it? purpose. I see. Right? Okay. The brand purpose. Okay. So one, we understand the company's impact. Next, we understand the culture of the people that's you know, bringing to yeah. the, towards that impact. Yeah, and it all kind of flows through. Yeah, yeah exactly. At an individual level. Okay. Yes. Fantastic. I find that it really helps when your team trusts you. And you know, in that trust, then they are able to do things for you, you know, mm. with a clear agenda.